Hey guys, it's Crookie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And this time, we've got the pleasure of watching TX Soul playing in the Tier 8 Chinese Heavy Tank. It is, of course, the 110. Now, I haven't featured this vehicle on the channel in a while, and that's probably because the 110 has kind of fallen out of favor, right? There are all of these new Tier 8 Premium Heavy Tanks, and people are playing less and less of these vehicles. However, with the 113 being in a better position than ever, and now the recently... Uh, incredible WZ 111 5A there's more reason than ever to go along the tier 8 well along the Chinese heavy line and of course if you want to go along it then you're gonna have to play through the tier 8 now the 110 is by no means a bad tank even if we do have all of these new fangled tier 8 premium heavy tanks uh, that might kind of push the boundaries of balance the 110 still has a lot of good things going for it Firstly, this vehicle has higher DPM than the IS-3, for example, and that's because the two tanks are, are quite competitive with, should we say, their statistics and their playstyle, and that's probably one of the most frequent questions I would get. How does the 110 compare to an IS-3? And firstly, let's look at the main armament. This tank forgoes the 122mm Soviet derp gun, so to say, to be able to use a more sleek 100mm main armament. Now the penetration isn't quite as high, it's 215 instead of 225. It doesn't have the alpha damage, this has 320. Instead of the 390 on the IS-3, or god forbid the 440 on the Defender, right? However, there are a few things that are better about this gun, apart from the DPM of, as I mentioned, which actually we're talking about it having 1920 compared to 1760 so that's a big old step up 160 dpm that's nearly 10 percent advantage that the 110 would have over its soviet tier 8 heavy tank counterparts but while the alpha damage is worse of course your rate of fire is much better because of that that dpm advantage and when you've got a lower caliber gun that means that pretty much your aim time is going to be better and that is definitely the case here while the IS-3's aim time is a rather tragic 3.4 seconds, this vehicle is a much more manageable 2.9 seconds. And also the accuracy on this tank is 0.38 compared to 0.4. And so that means you can just be a lot more consistent with the gun on your 110 compared to, for example, an IS-3. Now, this vehicle also has 6 degrees of gun depression compared to the IS-3's 5 degrees, so you can work ridge lines much better as TXL is going to be showing us in this gameplay. But, you know, that Alpha 305, oh, if we'd been playing in an IS-3 or a Defender there, we would have killed him in a single shot. But maybe we would have missed the shot, maybe we would have whiffed it, and then we wouldn't have been able to reload quite so quickly to be able to finish off the Tier 7 German self-propelled gun. Now, TX Zoll is going to push his way in here, and this is such an important engagement. What he is doing now is taking out the high-tiered opponents on the enemy team. And just take a look to see what's happened on the map. There was an absolute lemming train on both sides by the looks of it, while a few of his allies seem to be a little bit worse for wear. If he can shut down this FCM 50T and the IS-6, then there'll only be the T-44 remaining in this game for him to deal with. And now he's also dealt with the self-propelled gun. He is, of course, setting himself up to be able to then finish off the lower tier tanks that do not have as much of a chance against his fairly decent frontal armor. Now, when I say fairly decent, that's because uh, quite often a lot of people overestimate uh, the armor on the 110. It's definitely not like a Defender, even though it is shaped a lot like a Defender, as we can see here with the pike, the, that infamous pike that we'll be accustomed to if you played the IS-7. Now, the pike on this tank makes the upper plate absolutely awesome when you have a frontal engagement, and also if you can hide the lower plate, a lot like TXO, oh, what a snipe there into the top of the Skoda T-40. If you can hide the, the lower plate on, for example, this dead FCM, then his upper plate is absolutely fantastic. But the lower plate is, is only 110 millimeters thick, and so that means that if an opponent is about your height in front of you, then he's going to have to get about through 180 millimeters of effective armor, and that's not a lot. On a Defender, for example, it has 140 millimeters on the lower plate, and you're going to need about 230 millimeters to have a 50-50 chance to be able to get through the lower plate on that vehicle. So, really big differences here. But the main thing that really annoys me about the 110 is that if you try and angle the vehicle to make your lower plate better when people are shooting at it, of course you expose this part, uh, it will become a weakness on the pike, but more importantly, the side armor on this tank just 
behind the tracks if you angle this vehicle is really awful 60 millimeters and so if you do see a 110 trying to angle his armor like this just shoot him here not only are you going to take the track off but you're also going to be able to, to take his hit points away whereas against a soviet tank you might only be taking the tracks off and not damaging the tank oh a near miss there looks like the oni is using a derp gun and it whizzes just over tx's old head we're gonna have to see if he does come into play later on and while I've been discussing all the differences between these tanks, and also let me just finish off with one thing that uh, this Chinese vehicle is much better than its Soviet adversaries at, that is spotting. 380 meters view range compared to the god-awful 350 meters that you're getting on most Soviet tier 8 heavy tanks. Well, pretty much all of them, I think. I can't think of a tier 8 Soviet heavy tank that has more than 350 meters view range, but I'm sure there'll be somebody down in the comments below telling me that there is a tank. Anyway... TXL has managed to pick himself up a high caliber, well, no, sorry, not a high caliber, a Top Gun medal so far in this replay. He might be pushing a high caliber as well at 2,600, especially in a nice matchup like this against tier 7 and tier 6 tanks. But seeing that it was impossible for him to go along the southern part of this map and be able to push in towards the cap circle, he's now pulling back and making his way to, should we say, defending the mid part of the map, uh, preventing the enemies from flanking his allies, but also I guess he's leaving his self-propelled gun towards the south. It's interesting that that Crusader SP has actually left base and relocated all the way from the north, all the way to the south, almost in a, in a mirror position now as to what you would want to be in in your self-propelled gun. And that's because his friends are now leaving him behind. Even though that self-propelled gun has tried to do everything that he can to keep himself alive and keep himself in the game, it's just not going to be working out well for him. Now TXL finds himself in a bit of a sticky situation here. An E25 on the enemy team with four kills just scuttles his way down the other side of the ridge. And TXL quite rightly wants to instead go after the Leo. He wants to go after the T3485M that might be wake making his way through the forest. And gosh, actually the E25, that rather mobile tier 7 German premium tank destroyer is looping his way around. TXL puts a good round into the back of his vehicle there. But the E25 just casually sets the IS on fire through the front of his tank. How absolutely ludicrous. Now TXL repairs his tracks to hopefully be able to get his second shot into the E25 but is unable to do so and now finds himself in a truly awkward situation. Well not quite as awkward as that T3485M who is swiftly removed from the game but he is now alone with a self-propelled gun against six enemy tanks including gosh Three tier 7s, one tier 8, and two tier 6 T3485Ms propping up the bottom. We know how dangerous those vehicles can be, especially if you get the side and the rear of your tank with their, their really nice rate of fire and rather healthy DPM. Arguably crazy DPM for a tier 6 premium. So, now with the self-propelled gun meeting a grisly demise to the tier 7 Japanese heavy tank, Tzol manages to put one round into the Oni, but he is going to have to put another two to three shots into that Japanese beast to be able to shut him down and now decides to start reversing his way away from his opponents. Quite rightly, he needs to keep his frontal armor uh, towards them. He needs to then give himself as much time to be able to take them out one by one by one while maintaining his frontal armor towards them. And usually the best way to do that after the first shot is to be able to reverse. Now let's just clarify what kind of a situation TXL is facing himself in here. In this 1 versus 6, which he changes into a 1 versus 5. He is on nine kills he has killed nearly two-thirds of the enemy team but we do not have time to think about that as the leo tries to rush his way around him unfortunately he rolls really low there against the leo so he doesn't kill him in a single shot but he is focusing the higher tier tanks he finds the t44 he shuts down the t44 he bounces the first e25 shell but the second one goes into the side of his tank now the oni he's got to watch out for that oni if that oni is still using that big high explosive gun oh god this is not where you want to be is he about to be turned into a chinese pancake right now he reverses away from the Oni, reducing the damage he'll take, and focuses attention to that Leo who puts another 300 damage. Oh my word, it looks like the Oni misses his tank, so he's now got a great opportunity to put an APCR around through the front plate of that tier 7 German super heavy, and turn his 1 versus 6 now into a 1 versus 2. 12 kills, 4,700 damage. What a comeback here for TXL. He's doing everything right now, but he's on 58 hit points. And oh gosh, what is that on the map? T3485M coming in behind him. Oh, he fires a high explosive round. What the hell? Either he's run out of ammunition this game, or maybe he forgot to load more AP rounds in his brand new <laughs> tier 6 premium Soviet heavy, which is the mission marathon reward. 
Oh gosh, his 100mm main armament bounces off the E25 there. The E25 bounces off him and it is neck and neck stuff right now. Do not give that lower plate to that German tank destroyer. TX or whatever you do. Oh, great bounce there. Lovely connection. Now the E25 is a one shot and we have a sudden death moment. Will the E25 prevail here? TXL side scraping around the corner. He wants us the he wants the E25 to bounce off him. Oh, just a tracking shot. Has he locked him in place? Oh, the E25 repairs his track, so he is not locked in place. Trying to reverse, trying to bounce. The E25 ricochets off his tracks there, uh, getting absorbed into the hull. Nice. He wasn't over-angling there. If it angled like this, it probably would have been able to penetrate. Might have been a bit of a heartbreak. Shuts down the E25, takes down a 1 versus 6, and secures his 14th kill of this game. Only one other player on his team was able to kill a tank. What an incredible achievement. And he shuts down so many vehicles that he picks up the rarest of all medals. And that, of course, is the Rezene Heroes Medal for defeating at least 14 out of the 15 vehicles on the enemy team single-handedly. In addition to the Colobanos Medal for standing alone against at least five opponents, in this case six, a Spartans Medal for ricocheting with less than 10% of his hit points, a Steel Wall Medal for blocking 3,200 hit points this game, in addition to his high caliber for 5,326 damage dealt. What an incredible result for TXL. 1,800 base experience points still makes a profit even though he had to kill 14 players. Congratulations to you and I'm sure it gives a lot of hope to all players out there who might be having to play through the 110 right now to try and push up towards the tier 10 Chinese heavies. And so Texel, thank you so much for uploading your awesome achievement on what replays for the community to enjoy. I thoroughly did and hopefully all of you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like. I'd really appreciate it. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.